We're looking at the ruins of an L-shaped building. There's not much stone left above the ground. Do you think the stone could have gone to build your farmhouse, Albert? Well, I'm very doubtful about that because when you look downwards, the mountain is full of stone, so I would think so, the stone is down there. So pro probably not no, much stone taken away I, from here. I'm not the, saying never, but uh, I would think highly unlikely. So the stonework must be down here somewhere. Perhaps that's what's making the bank so high. Yeah, yeah. I'd go along with that. Okay, so what do we know about this building? I mean, San Verbal means Church of St. Derval, doesn't it? As, as I recall, St. Derval was one of King Arthur's warrior knights and he fought in the great battle of Camlan where Arthur's evil half-brother Mordred was killed but Arthur was mortally wounded. Derval was one of the few survivors, wasn't he, because of his skill as a warrior. And after the battle, he gave up fighting, he became a saint, he travelled all over Wales. There's a church which he founded in North Wales near Corwen. And then there's this one here. We don't know much about what he looked like, do we? I mean, no, there's... No, but nobody ever will. It can, no. It'll always be surmised. Yeah, man of mystery. It? Like there, the, I... the, the model they got at the farm. Yeah. You know, did he look yes, like that? Yes, did he look like that? I mean, in, you know? they've carved a recent statue of him which is now down at Thornhill, isn't it, Richard? It's in Thornhill Community Centre. And what did you, what did you base that on? Uh, the, the statue was uh, based on the description from the poem from Hall's Chronicles. Right, OK. So it's it's based on what we know about the statue of St Derval in his church in North Wales. Yeah. But that, again, is much, much later than the Saints old time. And there was supposed to be a picture of him here as well, wasn't there? Well, um, so they say. So, so they, they say. say. But again, we don't know what it was like. No. But we've got the root. We've got the stone ruins here. But Derval's original little monastery here would probably wouldn't have looked like that, would it, Ray? I'd be very surprised if it did. Uh, generally, you'd expect an early medieval structure like that to be timber built to begin with. Yeah. But you, you, you've just raised, you know, the fascinating core of the problem of how little we know about some of these early yeah. saints. On the other hand any sort of physical evidence or material culture associated with these early sites has got to be good. Yes. So that makes it exciting that Richard and his team are going to be doing some investigation soon. Right, um, what have you found out so far, Richard? Well, so far, uh, on the previous project, we geophysed this field, and uh, it has shown three features. One very large building, yeah. one very small building. Yeah. Well, I presume they're buildings. Yeah. That's what the geophysicist is. Uh, mm hinting at, and um, a ditch around the, the existing ruin. Right. So we're assuming little buildings around a central church, maybe? Well, yeah, but um, a, a very small building over the one side, but a building that's larger than yeah. the church up yeah. by the gate here. Right. And it's interesting the way that, even though you can't actually see stonework at no. the moment, you can see changes in the vegetation, right. rate of growth yeah. and yeah. coloration, mm. yeah. which does seem to coincide with the geophysics. Yeah. yeah. So it could be very interesting. Yeah. And, and that change of vegetation happens in other parts of the field yeah, as indeed, well. It's, 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 it's quite fascinating yeah. what's going on yeah. underground there. But a lot of the early buildings would have been timber, Watland Door, wouldn't they? And then when the monks from Santanum get here, they rebuild it in stone, they have a farm here, and then we do know there was a church here by the 15th century because a wandering poet from North Wales came here on a pilgrimage and actually wrote a poem saying how wonderful the hospitality was here. It's, it, it, it's sort of a bit like doing a travel blog, if you like. But then it all came to an end at the Reformation, didn't it? It did, it did. It was all uh, torn down as, as far as I understand. And there's that really gruesome story about what happens to the statue. Well, yeah, um, you, you've got um, them taking a the statue from Wales, taking it to uh, London, strapping a Francescan friar to it, who is the confessor of Catherine of Aragon, uh, who refuses to accept King Henry as the supreme head of the church, and they strap him to the statue and roast him to death. Wasn't there a prophecy? There An was. An old Welsh prophecy that said that one day the statue of St. Derval from North Wales would burn a forest 
burned down a forest. And the friar's name was? John Forrest. So this was their idea of a joke? Well, possibly a joke or a coincidence. <laughs> There was actually a poem written about it, wasn't there? I mean, it, it's it's on the interpretation board that's right, around there. That's right. David Darvel Gatheren. They had difficulty with Welsh names. David Darvel Gatheren, as saith the Welshmen, fetched outlaws out of hell. Now he is come with spear and shield, in harness to burn in Smithfield, for in Wales he may not dwell. And Forrest the Friar, that obstinate liar that willfully shall be dead in his contumacy the gospel doth deny the king to be supreme head there we have it so perish all enemies of the royal supremacy certainly, certainly. didn't do to cross henry from here you can follow the footpath back across the fields to green meadow or you can carry on with us walking back in time up to tumbalum and the iron age